My name is Ekaterina Gordieva. My husband was Sergei Grinkov. Together, we were world figure skating champions, winners of two Olympic gold medals. We were young and in love, and suddenly he died. He was only 28. His memory lives on in my soul, and that of our daughter, Daria, who reminds me so very much of Sergei. With us, everything was natural. First, we were skating partners, then close friends, then we became lovers, husband and wife, mother and father. They used to say of Sergei and me that when we skated, our hearts beat as one. This was true in our life as well. When his heart stopped, mine was broken forever. I write this now for Daria and for you, so you and she will know about our love. This is our story, the story of Gordieva and Grinkov, the story of my Sergei. November 1995, Lake Placid, New York. The cast of Stars on Ice, a professional touring company of figure skating's best. Scott Hamilton, Christy Yamaguchi, and Paul Wiley, to name just a few, have assembled here to rehearse for a new season of shows. When we're doing this circle, the back circle, I still see people like cheating in, like they're afraid that it's not gonna circle. Among them, the renowned Russian pair skaters Gordieva and Grinkov, Katya and Sergei. Their elegant classic skating works magic on audiences everywhere. A romantic, emotional style has made them a breathtaking sensation. Now their skating reflects a new maturity and passion. In life and love, they have found fulfillment and joy. This autumn, Katya and Sergei are enjoying long rehearsals with good friends and cherishing family time with three-year-old daughter, Daria. On the ice, Sergei is battling a recurring back problem, but superb athlete that he is, Sergei trains hard and all seems well. He was probably in physically the best condition I think I've ever seen. He was huge, you know, just you know, he was working out like three times a day on the back machine, trying to get around the, the nerve problem he was having. He was, he was, uh, you know, eating really well. He was, um, you know, he was skating a lot, you know, just doing the basic stuff, not to stress his back. They were doing lifts that were getting around the injury. I mean, they're doing everything right. Monday morning, November 20th. After a group rehearsal, Katya and Sergei moved next door to a smaller rink. With choreographer and longtime friend, Marina Zueva, they do a run-through of a new program completed just the day before. Halfway through, something strange is happening to Sergei. Katya's skate with him, and she try to ask him what's happened, but he don't 
tell her anything. He just slow go on, on eyes, very, very slow touch, hand eyes, and the left side. And I saw Katya's face. She was very, I mean, looks like she's very, very unusual afraid. And I right away go to other side. Even I didn't come to Sergei or Katya. I just go other side to ring and call 911. Help fast, fast. And ran across to see what was going on. And I got there, and that somebody was had a respirator on him. He was blue. So my first response was just to put my hand on Katya's back and start praying. And and then I just put my hand on Sergey's skate to pray, and it was just so limp, and there just wasn't anything there. Yeah, at the rink, it, it was just confusion um, and in shock, not knowing what was going on. He was taken to the hospital, and all we can do is sit together in the hotel and, and wait to hear any news. I just looked at the lake, and there was just a complete stillness over it. And I told Rosalind, I was like, the lake is holding its breath for Sergei. And we were too. We end tonight with the sudden and unexpected death today of one of the greatest athletes in the world. Olympic figure skater Sergei Grinkov of Russia collapsed while practicing in Lake Placid, New York. Sergei Grinkov was just 28 years old. In a single breath, figure skating legends Gordieva and Grinkov, all that Katya and Sergei have created, is a memory. Suddenly, Katya is alone. Nobody can imagine what she's going through. I mean, I can't. How can you? How can you even imagine what she's going through? And she's young, and she's she will find her way. And thank goodness she has. Dasha to take care of because I think maybe that will help just a little bit to have somebody to take care of. You were too young, Dasha, when your father died. He was a loving father and wonderful husband. He bought your first skates and held you in his arms. So all these things will not be forgotten. I now write them for you, from the beginning. I was born in Moscow on May 28, 1971. My mother's name is Elena. My mom was 19 when I was born. My mother was working at TAS, the Soviet news agency. My father's name is Alexander. He was a dancer. Not a ballet dancer, but a folk dancer. Both my mother and father traveled much for their work. I spent most of my time with my younger sister, Maria. She and I had a wonderful life growing up in our Moscow apartment. The mighty Soviet sports machine demands a constant supply of young and eager talent. At the age of four, Katya starts figure skating lessons, despite her father's dreams of rejoining the Russian ballet. She was able to fall in love with skating, but I had a dream that she would enter the Bolshoi Theater Dance School. She did everything not to enter that school. It was clear that she didn't want to study there. We were left with ice. It was completely impossible to find skates that fit her. She had such a microscopic foot. The smallest size that was produced in the USSR was five sizes too big. So my mother needed special socks, which we put inside the boots. Then we made a kind of synthetic layering. To make a long story short, my kids started in skates that were way too big for her. At Moscow's Red Army Sports Club, Katya begins training in earnest. 
There is a boy four years older than Katya who also hopes to be a figure skater. The son of two Soviet police officers, Sergei Grinkov, is a polite young man, tall, energetic, infinitely charming, and full of mischief. I think in school, he, he was a little bit like uh, not very, very serious, taking the serious, the educational program. And he, he, he loved to have a lot of fun and just and play around. I would say he had no childhood like a normal kid usually does. When he was five, he was placed in the army club school and those crazy training sessions began. Even then, two training sessions a day. Then school was added. I remember him competing as the single skater. That time we were competing in the, now it's former Soviet Union Cup between the junior and uh, we, I've been competing against him, actually, so. And uh, I beat him that time, and probably that was his, the, one of the last singles uh, competition, because next time when I saw him, he was doing pairs with Katya. A coach at the Red Army Club suspects that individually Katya and Sergei may not become champions, but put them together, and their potential could be enormous. Maybe he explained to us all these little details. Because it was awkward and uh, I was nervous and also exciting, of course. Never even thought that I can ever be a pair skater. So the very first uh, try as a pair skater was Sergei. And it was, um, was an amazing experience. The very first, we were uh, we were shy, which I, I didn't look at him at all. <laughs> didn't look in his eyes. The first tentative steps towards their skating destiny come in 1983, an international debut in Sapporo, Japan. From the very first, Katya and Sergei bring something special to the ice. A spark of energy, an innocent, natural quality that sets them apart. They have a skill and presence beyond their years. I was very nervous because we didn't skate well at all. We missed the jump in the short program, and then we messed up a lot in the free program because this ice ring seems for me very huge and there was so many people watching me. It was just too much, too much. <laughs> I wasn't really upset actually when we got to the fifth place by the end of the free program. But it also was a lot of fun. This first competition in Japan was a real adventure for us. And it was feeling like vacation with my older brother. I wish I can make time go backwards. That today was yesterday. And yesterday was day before. Until that time when Sergei and I were first time together. Skating and working and talking. And so very slowly, without really ever thinking about it, falling in love. I remember the first gift I ever gave him. Such a little thing, almost silly. My father brought me from Spain, like a little a keychain. It looked like a little gun and it's can shot even make noise, <laughs> so I thought it was very cool, and since I'm a girl, I don't need this, so I gave this to Sergei, and it was on his birthday, and I was getting ready for the, to give this gift a long time, because I didn't know if I can do this, or, so I was, you know, like a little shy, but I thought he would like it, and 
he kept this chain. <laughs> a year passed by since we were in Japan, and we trained a lot together, and we got to know each other much better on the ice and off the ice. December 1984, Colorado Springs, their first trip to the United States. Katya and Sergei are anxious to demonstrate the dramatic difference a year can make. The world will see pair skaters with a natural chemistry on the ice, two performers beginning to develop into a force to be reckoned with. After we won the competition, that was the first time when my feelings towards Sergei started to change off the ice. And I wanted to be with him after the competition, but in, and I felt jealous that I cannot because I didn't feel like I can be his girlfriend or even close friend. Katya's schoolgirl crush on her handsome partner is growing. Back in Moscow, she invites Sergei to her 14th birthday party. He called me and said, can, can you come up to the subway station? I have something for you. And so I came, uh, I fly probably to, <laughs> to the subway station. And I saw him there with a little, uh, not little, it was huge dog, uh, a toy. Uh, soft dog and uh, so he gave me this and I was very surprised I definitely didn't expect any gifts or anything from him I was keeping this dog for a long time I was always on my bed and this dog called Grinya it's hard for me to say what kind of a feeling Sergei had but for me it was something very new and different but feelings must wait. The task at hand is victory. Victory for the state and victory for the Red Army Club. Eager for results in 1985, the Soviets assign as Katya and Sergei's coach, Colonel Stanislav Zuk. Zuk was a very tough coach. His idea to separate us off the ice so we won't have time to really think about anything else except training. But we grew together through this difficult time and his idea didn't work. Their rise in the figure skating world is fast and unprecedented. In the 1986 Soviet Championships, a second place finish behind the defending champions. Then another second place finish at the European Figure Skating Championships. Soon, they're poised on the edge of the toughest test of their young career, the 1986 World Figure Skating Championships in Geneva, Switzerland. At their very first world championships, Katya and Sergei win. But it's victory with a price. The grief and turmoil they have suffered from their demanding coach, Colonel Zuk, plus the pressure of high-level competition on the two young skaters. I was very, very happy that the competition was over. <laughs> and when I come back to the room, I started crying because I was very disappointed because I thought that this is world championship. You have this gold medal and uh, you're not happy. Here, 14-year-old Ekaterina Gordieva and Sergei Grinkov. I think we trained a lot through the whole season and it was our first world, first European, it was first national for us. The whole season was overwhelming, over drained, too many changes, too many pressure from our coach. 
And the thing we wanted, both of us, is just to rest and relax. And the world was too stressful for us. Sergey said, I don't like skating. I don't like skating. And, uh, and I said, then why do you do it? And he said, because, because I have to. It's what I do. But I don't like it. For him, just train every day and compete and be with his coach 24 hours a day, it was too much. It was normal that he didn't want to skate. I even found that for myself that I had this feeling that I don't want to skate. Here we have the world champions, Katarina Gordieva and Sergei Grinka. She's only 15, he's 19. They're sensational. But everything is not sensational. Colonel Zook's behavior becomes more bizarre. He does not travel with them to their first event in the fall of 1986. They place second. Their celebrity gives Katia and Sergei a degree of power, enough to oust Colonel Zook. In comes a kinder, more progressive coach, Stanislav Leonovich. Choreographer Marina Zueva joins the team to bring her unique vision of style and grace to the ice. They replace experience with compassion and friendship. It was nice, and a little bit I wasn't sure if he has enough experience to coach us, but I thought that we have enough, enough experience and we can make something great all together. But new beginnings can often derail the best intentions, or at least delay the greatness. In the 1987 European Championships, the first venture for the new quartet, their inexperience proves that some lessons are better learned by the book and not at a terrible price in competition. During the free program, after a routine lift, a strap on Sergei's right pants leg comes undone. The referee blows a whistle, telling them to stop. Katya and Sergei look to Leonovich for guidance. His impulse is for them to skate to the end. Sergei whispers to Katya, don't look, keep skating. Then suddenly the music is stopped. Katya and Sergei continue to skate the program element by element, cheered on by the crowd. The judges rule that Katya and Sergei must skate the program over. But it's too late. They're exhausted, and Leonovich agrees that they cannot and should not skate again. The coach and the leader of the Soviet team are kindly asked to come to see the... The final ruling? Disqualification. We just left right away and decided not skate anymore. Next morning, we've met a lot of other coaches who said that you should have go and skate, skate again, and there was a lot of talking about it. There was just something which we didn't know, the rules we didn't know. I think after this event, we realized that we didn't have much experience, and it was our mistake, all of us. It brought us more together, and especially Sergey and me started to feel closer to each other because we like one person. Soviet Socialist Republics, Ekaterina Gordiva and Sergei Grinkov. At the 1987 World Championships, Katya is just 15 years old, Sergei 20, and they skate the same program to near perfection. They win their second World Championship. This was the competition, and I was feeling that I'm with Sergei, and I'm with uh, Stanislav, and Marina is watching us. I was feeling like we group. I was just very, very proud of all of us, none of me. 
actually, but all of us, I was feeling that we are a team. Once in a lifetime, this comes along when you see a pair team like that. They move as one. Each one knew what the other one was going to do. It was just, it was magic to watch them. It was just fabulous. Figure skating promoter Tom Collins invites Katya and Sergei on a skating tour of America. They are thrilled by the opportunity. Collins asks Canadian ice dancer Tracy Wilson to be young Katya's roommate. I said, oh, sure, no problem. I'll look out for her. No problem. And that's what I think his concern was. He wanted to make sure she was, she was kind of taken care of. And, uh, and I remember after rooming with her for a couple of days thinking, oh, who's taking care of who here? She's, she's the sort of person with an old soul. Um, so um, I think the inside is so grown up and mature in so many ways. The tour endears these two likable Russians to the international skating family. A freewheeling life on the road is the perfect atmosphere for Katya and Sergei to become even closer. Some on the tour notice the change. They were very, very close at that time. And I noticed it. And uh, although they weren't together all the time, I could see him looking at her all the time. And at times on the tour, I would see her staring at him. And my own observation, I thought, well, maybe there is something here that will come out later on and and it did so that was one day when we went to disneyland that day i was just feeling that sergey paying just too much attention and me he just um would hug me a little bit and get close to me and that was probably the first time when i was feeling that this is not just regular partnership, you know, hugs or something. It was just great feelings and I do remember that day very well. There was something new and uh, exciting. Time was going by so fast. So many competitions, so many different cities. We lived everywhere and nowhere, it seems. Then suddenly everyone began talking about Canada and the Winter Olympics. Fall, 1987. Time for all of the Soviet Union's elite athletes to dedicate themselves to a single goal. For Katya and Sergei, it would be the greatest challenge yet, the 1988 Winter Olympics in Calgary. Only a gold medal would do. The Soviet team has moved outside of Moscow to an exclusive training center. Practices are long and hard. Downtime is spent in activity rooms and dormitories. Here, away from prying eyes, Katya and Sergei finally have a chance to open up to each other. We had those quiet evenings when we can talk and uh, not about skating, of course, <laughs> and uh, uh, just laugh. And um, so I was there, that evenings were very dear for me and I was thinking that I was all also feel very proud that I can uh, um, do something nice for Sergei. Just when things seem to be going so well unexpected calamity strikes. In practice one afternoon Sergei hits a patch of soft ice. Katya takes a hard fall, is hospitalized and suddenly the entire Olympic season is in jeopardy. I was very upset the way it's happened and I start to blame Sergei because I think I thought that we're gonna miss the whole year, we're gonna miss the National European Olympics and just because of stupid eyes and I thought that he wasn't careful. And then Sergei came uh, with a bunch of flowers 
And that was the first time when I saw him so disappointed and nervous and uh, he didn't smile. He always smile and so loose and here he came with the flowers and he's very upset and first thing he say is sorry. I never knew a young man could be so tormented. In the hospital corridor, he was blaming himself. He thought it was all his fault. I remember very well that Sergei just kept sitting in the hallway and waiting for me. That was so amazing for me to see him, you know, with such feelings. He wanted to express his feeling, I think, to me somehow. And the only way it would be possible was on the ice. I was feeling this after I come back from the hospital. And after we start to skate, I was feeling that I have a man next to me who is holding me. He was holding me so tight now, like I thought that he has never, never got, gonna let me go, you know. I felt so great, and I felt that um, something changed in him in our skating. But I can definitely feel that uh, he feel very much strongly and more serious about skating and about taking care of me. Christmas time in Russia. A family holiday. For the first time since they began skating together, Katya invites Sergei to spend it with her family. Celebrated on New Year's Eve, there is a decorated tree, candles, songs, and presents. Katya gives Sergei a needlepoint she's been working on all year, a sad clown sitting on a park bench. Immediately after Christmas, they are off to Prague, Czechoslovakia for the 1988 European Championships the last stop before the Olympics. They skate unevenly, out of sync, but even a less than perfect Gordieva and Grinkov is enough Gordieva and Grinkov to win. On the way to Calgary, Sergei reassures Katya, don't worry, we'll be ready. I just remember that he was holding my hand during the flight and this brought me some nice feelings about that I don't have to worry right now, I don't have to be already nervous about the skating or anything, and everything will be fine. And this is the way I always felt about Sergei. And as I said that, especially when he held my hand off the ice, it meant that something very, something very special, something very nice. I was feeling that he's mine. He's mine and no one can hold my hand right now except Sergei. Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Winning the pair's Olympic gold is a Soviet tradition. Since 1964, Russian duos have won the medal six times in a row. Now the pressure's on Katya and Sergei. I was still nervous, but I was trying to well, to be tough. <laughs> and especially I had Sergei next to me. I was holding his hand. And I was looking at Stanislav, and he was very, very nervous. I can see it. And I thought that I have to skate well for him and for Sergei and for my family because they're watching me on TV right now. I looked at Sergei and he's calm as, as usually.
Amazing feeling. Very happy we did it well. Just happiness and uh, happiness that it's over and over well, you know, that we've done it. So after we went to this kiss and cry area, I saw Stanislav who was smiling and Sergey was smiling. And when they give us the medals, there was great and happy moment and um, just just happiness. After the pairs of Antiwas, it was late at night, and I went into the cafeteria to get something to eat. And there was Katya, and she was across the cafeteria. It's like, Tracy, Tracy, and she had her medal, and she was jumping up and down with it. And it was like a toy. Next day, I was feeling that it's like a little bit sad because it's just you getting ready for this the whole, I don't know, five, six months. And then it's 
when it's over, you think it's too, too quick. The sadness Katya suffers is compounded by frustration. Sergei goes to celebrate their victory with friends of his own, leaving Katya behind. I knew that Sergei can be my very close friend, that, and he's the only person who I can go with. And he allowed me to feel this too, because sometimes he was very close to me and spent the whole day with me. And I will feel great, and I will think that everything is wonderful. But then next day, he would kind of forgot about me and be with his own friends. And this would little upset me, but I couldn't say, wait a minute, why are you not taking me with you? If some, sometimes I was getting upset. Back home in Russia, Katya's family treats her to a vacation on the beaches of the Black Sea. While she's away, Sergei sends flowers and a gift to Katya's apartment. When he was thinking that he wanted to bring his attention to my attention, it's definitely something very special. Very romantic, very pure. But when Katya returns to Moscow and the training center, a painful stress fracture in her foot makes her unable to skate. It will keep her off the ice for weeks. I would go and see how Sergei skate every day. The one practice, he was jumping and uh, did nice double axles and triple toes. And I was uh, feeling very upset and jealous that I can't go and skate with him. And once he just come up to me and said, would you like to skate? And I said, of course I want to skate. And uh, he said, Let, let's go skate. He just take me on his hands and he just skate with me a little bit around the ice. And uh, just make me feel that uh, that I need him. feel that everything is just perfect and we can skate and uh, if you're not gonna skate on skates I'm gonna <laughs> hold you all the time <laughs> Sergei decides to spend the holiday in Moscow with their friend Alexander Fadeev. Because Sergei will not be coming to the country with her family, Katya gives him his gift in advance, a bottle of sweet liqueur called Paradise, and a gentle kiss on the cheek. After a couple of sips of Paradise, the boys change their minds and hitchhike a ride to the dacha in the woods. Sergei and Alexander showed up over there right right before the New Year's Eve and they um, they were a little bit drunk because they probably drink some of this <laughs> some of this uh, paradise liqueur <laughs> and uh, they were looking very funny and they were joking and uh, so I was very very happy that they decided to come and uh, Sergey come to me and said, "Let's uh, let's go to the sauna and let's take sauna before the New Year's Eve. It's a very good idea." <laughs> so we went to the sauna. It was freezing there, and the slowly the, as the the sauna was warming up, and we just have good fun. The three of us. Good. It's, it's kind of like uh, not, it's kind of like warm friendship. 
So we sit at the table and we talk and we had Sergei uh, made a little toss. I kind of like feel a little bit uncomfortable because I, I see that between two of them, something is going to happen or maybe it's happened already. Maybe maybe he ne they need the room or something. And I spent a lot of time inside the sauna. After Alexander left, Sergei just had something um, feel a little bit shy and I would, I wasn't sure because I didn't feel very comfortable to be one by one with him too and he said that Katya I have to talk to you about something I have to say you very important thing I said okay let's let's talk <laughs> Sergey just said Katya why why don't we kiss <laughs> the sauna I I was different person I was totally different person because I could not believe that it's happened with me I could not believe that why I was thinking why I am such a lucky girl Katya and Sergei are in love fate seems to be in their corner soon landing the young lovers in the most romantic city in the world Paris for the 1989 World Championships. Perhaps the distraction of being in love and in Paris will cause Katya and Sergei to lose focus at the competition. It doesn't. They win anyway, skating better than ever. I just remember that that was probably the first time when I didn't pay too, too much attention on the competition. I paid much more attention on Sergey, and that we spent time together, and we were always together, and then everyone looking at us maybe different way that we we together most of the time, and we. Probably a lot of people find out that we have feelings to each other. And there was Paris, it was spring, you know, walking there and hugging and kissing and the, just, just this wonderful feeling of spring. There's no parents or anyone. This was the time when you don't see anyone except the person you love and that was that time for us. To find the kind of happiness I had with Sergei is impossible. Not that every day was a joy. We had had to struggle with the problems all athletes must face, stress, pain and age. 1990. Katya is 18. The year before, her body had begun going through changes. She has had to adapt her skating, her rhythms, her timing, learn the jumps all over again. After thousands of lifts and throws, Sergei too is sensing a difference in his smooth skating style. Now 22, he's begun to feel deep pain in his shoulder. The concerns have reversed for Katya and Sergei. Now, the skating's in question not their love. Playing to their strength, choreographer Marina Zueva creates a program perfectly suited to the early bloom of romance, Tchaikovsky's Romeo and Juliet. The actual music is so strong and so full of love. We had those best feelings because we were in love, but also it was kind of very young love because we wasn't sure if it will be strong or not. 
And this is exactly what's happened with Roman and Juliet. But a month later, at the World Championships, the elegance expected of a typical Gordieva and Grinkov performance is missing. They are disappointing both themselves and their fans. Another set of side-by-side -side jumps, double axles in the combination. She singled hers, could not do anything with the landing. Disastrous. Final move. Forward inside death spiral. This might be the weakest performance I've seen them do in two years, maybe ever. We start to talk more and more that we uh, we're a little bit tired and we want to spend more time off the ice and we want to be more relaxed and uh, spend more time together. And uh, we also were thinking that we not learning anything new and we kind of stuck and it's why our skating is not getting better in march 1990 katya and sergey opt for a change they rejoin the tom collins tour in the united states a welcome break from the pressure of amateur competitions physically and mentally for now all is well again then late one night in washington dc the telephone rings with news for sergey you know, I remember that night because I've been uh, sharing a room with Sergey, and uh, uh, he's got a call from Moscow, and someone called him and told his father died. Just sit for a minute or two and did nothing, just kind of get, get into himself. And... Uh, after that, he stepped out the room and went outside. And I didn't know what, what to say, and uh, I just come up to him and just give him a hug, and he, and... Uh, <laughs> I didn't know what... I didn't know what to tell him because I, I never had in my family deaths and I didn't know what to how, how to handle it, what to say, and I just wanted to be with him all the time. Sergei's father had died of a heart attack in the arms of his loving wife. His death is a moment of passage for Sergei, strengthening his resolve that he and Katya make a life together. First step drop their amateur status and turn professional. Less pressure, more security, and happiness. We were very happy about it and we thought, great, we have so much time now that we can learn new elements, we can heal Sergei's shoulder, we can, uh, we can go earn money with, as a professionals. The transition to professional skating goes smoothly a confident Sergei decides it's time for another giant step. We were walking and Sergei said that I want to give you a ring so you will always remember me and always will wear this. And so we went to the antique store and he got me this ring. We chose it, we chose it together. He liked it and I liked it. And um, so I don't take it off since. <laughs> The wedding is set for April 1991, an intimate ceremony in a small Russian Orthodox church in Moscow. The groom is 24 years old, the bride just 19. Thank you. 
Everything was beautiful. Sergey was looked wonderful, and we have so many friends. We have to dance the waltz, and uh, I don't remember if we ever danced waltz together on the floor, and that was a quite experience because. <laughs> But Sergey held me very strong and we, we danced it. But I remember that I was afraid because I thought everyone's gonna laugh at us because we don't know how to dance this waltz. <laughs> they had met on a skating rink eight years before. On this day, the circle of partnership, friendship, and love is complete. After 74 years, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, the nation of Lenin and Stalin is tearing itself apart. Political and social change has led to a second Russian revolution. In 1991, a new Russia is emerging, and Katya and Sergei experience the violence firsthand from across the street in her parents' apartment. Katya and Sergei spent more and more time away from their homeland's turmoil. They joined the prestigious American skating tour Stars on Ice, which provides them with a satisfying and lucrative professional life. What's more, Katya and Sergei now have a chance to enrich the artistry of their skating. we together as many hours as we want. We skate in great show together. We travel together. You're thinking that you can't wish anything better because you have each other. And for myself, I knew that I have the greatest guy in the world. It was wonderful. We just didn't need anything else. It was perfect time. For the young lovers, the future now holds other promises. We wasn't home for a long time, and he wanted to go see friends and to hang out with them. And and I was so mad because I said, you can go see your friends again, and you don't even want to know that I'm pregnant. And then I couldn't believe his reaction. He was like, <laughs> he was t telling me something too, but then he stopped and he said, oh, really? It's what you just said <laughs> and I uh, said I probably may be pregnant and and I have to go and see doctor again and he said why you didn't say because I said because I didn't know <laughs> and he, he was so happy right away he didn't want to talk about anything anymore he just want to hold me all the time and and he said that's great Katya and Sergei open yet another chapter of their storybook life, parenthood. Careers go on hold as they embark on the miraculous adventure of childbirth. Early in the morning of September 11, 1992, in Princeton, New Jersey, the famous pair skaters Gordieva and Grinkov become a trio. I wake Sergei and I said, I'm not feeling well. We probably should call hospital. Sergei started thinking what we should take with us. And I said, nothing, just take me <laughs> and let's go. <laughs> and uh, uh, so we went there and he kept asking me, uh, he kept asking me on the way there if I'm feeling well and I tried to tell him, yes, I'm feeling very well, but <laughs> I didn't really feel well. <laughs> But what you can say, and I can see that he's a little scared, but I also was so happy that he learned this way to the hospital very well, because when he's so nervous, you don't probably know. We got there, they took me, and uh, then Sergei didn't know what to do. He said, I'm probably gonna go back. And I said, maybe you shouldn't go back. Maybe you can sit here for a while. In Russia, the man does not participate in the birth. A father's role in America is not quite as simple. The early morning hours find Katya in labor and Sergei waiting in the car outside in the parking lot. 
a nurse is sent to find him and hurries Sergei to Katya's bedside. He probably wasn't very comfortable with this too, but I started, and I wasn't very comfortable and I said, they said that you have to be here. I mean, they said someone has to be here. And he said, no, that's fine. Of course, I couldn't be here. And I can see that he's he never been so nervous on a competition like this. <laughs> But here I can see like he was walking in the room back and forth all the time and how are you feeling and I was trying to say that I'm feeling perfect. The infant Daria, nicknamed Dasha, five pounds, four ounces, enters the world in perfect health. He just sit next to me and she just hold my hand and uh, after all started and I look at him and I was thinking this is the most amazing time I ever had in my life. With the arrival of Dasha, priorities change. Career choices must now reflect the needs of three. When Katya returns to the ice, she expresses her love of husband and child in the taped introduction to a new routine. Called Reverie, it is the story of their happiness. I feel very lucky. I'm doing what I love to do. I'm skating together with men who very love me and I love him very much too. And now we have a baby. I feel like I'm luckiest woman in the world. feeling that I'm the luckiest woman in the world right now because I was feeling so much older than and so much wiser than everyone else because I have Daria now, I have a child and I know what is this, all this medals is nothing compared to this. And I also have husband with me and I skate with him and we were, we were so happy. I was um, very, very happy that I finally feel that, yes, Sergei is the man who, even if everything will be bad, he would uh, never leave me if, if 
something even will happen with me, he would never leave me, he would be always with me and support me and will take care of me and Daria. Together, they make a joyful family and are thrilled by yet another unexpected opportunity. A return to the Olympics. The International Skating Union has allowed a rules change. Professional skaters will be permitted to compete at the 1994 Olympics in Lillehammer. In 88 in Calgary, I was feeling that uh, I didn't value the competition as much as I can do it now. There was uh, something very special. We just did it together. The other Olympics we did separate. We were athletes. We did our competition. This Olympic, there was, we were family, and now we definitely did it for each other and for Daria. The weeks and months of training are exhausting but rewarding. In Moscow, just prior to the games, they undergo a rigorous physical exam and receive a clean bill of health. With the eyes of the world turned to Norway in February of 1994, Katya and Sergei are thinking only of three special television viewers in Moscow. things from 88 and you know you grow up and you realize more things in Lillehammer I just like a sponge I just wanted to fill myself with a lot of feelings so I will will remember them forever because I obviously can understand that it will be my last Olympics then <laughs> Gordieva and Grinkov make one more dream reality. They win their second Olympic gold medal. For a much needed chance to relax and plan for the family's future, 
Katia, Sergei, and Daria moved to Simsbury, Connecticut, a real home of their own for the first time. Life is good. Finally, you realizing that yes, this is this is your man, this is your husband, and he is also father, father of your daughter. And I mean, this is what you need in life. This is those minutes is uh, will be the most most important in life. Life was going so well. Gold medals and successful career, loving, beautiful child who made every day a moment to look forward to. I had my favorite man around me all the time. I had so little experience with the sadness of life. Someday he'll come along, the man I love, and he'll be big and strong. To make him stay. He'll look at me and smile. I'll understand. And in a little while, he'll take my hand. And though it seems absurd, I know we Choreography expresses a breathtaking romantic spirit, a quality within the skaters captured perfectly at the right time in their lives. It is seen and enjoyed by audiences through the spring of 1995 and then never performed again. On the morning of November 20th, 1995, Lake Placid Emergency Services rushed Sergei to a nearby hospital. So we were waiting, and then um, there's a lady and man came, uh, and 
she started to saying that uh, they did this and they did this and they tried to do this and she said that we can't um, save him she said we lost him I couldn't um, it's just, it just took me a time to trans to translate for myself and to kind of realize this and uh, I, I I didn't know what to, uh, even to say. I just didn't want to didn't want her to say this. I couldn't cry. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't scream. I couldn't do anything. Just seems like uh, my all emotions all stopped, and oh, I didn't know what to do. I just didn't know what to do. I just wanted to, everything stopped and no one, especially this lady who told me about everything, I didn't want her to say this. And An autopsy reveals that Sergei died of coronary disease. Two of the arteries to his heart completely blocked. And I said, are you sure? You're talking somebody else, another Russian, not Sergei Grenko. I just think it's not right. It's something wrong with that. The, I don't know, mother nature can do it to him. Just shock. Losing someone you love, losing someone who's part of your family. And it was very scary, and um, no one wanted to believe it. First of all, I wasn't really believe I won't see him again and uh, like don't see his smile and just can't really, it never can say, hi, Sergei. That was really hard for me too. Sergei was a wonderful husband and a perfect son-in-law. What can be added to this? The only thing I can tell you, I buried my son. It was not my son-in-law who passed away. Just have known them and to, and, to, and to spend as much time as I have with them. I mean, my life is so much better. You know, I, he was my Bolshoi Druk. And I miss him. They showed themselves. You saw the, the romance, and you saw the passion, and you saw the depth of feeling and love they had for each other. And, it, and that came out every single time. time and their space is separate from the rest of skating history.
this years, I think, was the, the best years in my life. And anything I will will do in in my future, I don't think I will I will get so I will get so much happiness that I did with Sergey. I just don't think it really possible because I'm really disappointed with life now. I'll take care of Daria. <laughs> She'll be a very happy girl. Happiest ever. I hope people will find time to really appreciate the, this little minutes with each other that they can just smile to each other and say that they love each other just just one extra time just one extra word it's, it's so important very important The skating community plans a tribute to Sergei, entitled Celebration of a Life. Just three months after Sergei's death, Katya takes the ice once again, cautiously stepping into the future.
No matter what lies ahead, the best years of my life will have been with Sergey. I still have my skating and most important of all, I have Daria. She's so much a part of Sergey and so much a part of my future. That future seems less frightening to me, less sad than it did. And I approached it with hope and resolve and always with memories.